number one, I think you guys would all understand this is you know, under investigation, so I you know, can't comment a lot. But what I can say um, is a little bit about what I told the team. And uh, I think, like most things, not necessarily related to this, but as a lesson, um, let's make sure you always, you know, let somebody know and tell. There's usually um, a whole bunch of people that want to be part of the solution. And so when you have that, whether that's for this team or any team or a parent, uh, that kind of communication allows you to, you know, come up with some solutions. So, like I said, not, you know, specific to, to this, but it was just a good lesson, you know, to always have that conversation. It's usually much more difficult in your head than it is really having the actual conversation. And uh, so just wanted to make sure I got a, a lesson out to the guys as we're going through it. So um, we did release, uh, Brandon, I found out um, some of the information on uh, May 27th, and then uh, we released him on June the 3rd. And then switching to the offensive line, like a lot of talk about that. You have four, four new starters, um, some young guys there. What can you guys, first of all, what can you guys do as coaches to kind of help that process? And what things can you look for now? Because you want to, you, as you said, you want to see them in pads. But what do you look for now that shows maybe growth or whatever? Yeah, I think uh, first part, um, like think about walk, you know, crawl, run. Like how are we doing the meetings first, you know, and the system and the learning. And so there's walkthroughs. In other words, assignment wise and targeting are we in the right spot we may not be able to assess all the physical things we want right now but there's still a lot to assess all the individual skill work and so where are they at big picture wise playbook um, where are we at doing the individual skill work and then the last piece like you said will really come at that position offensive and defensive line the evaluations uh, much more critical for the physical part once we get to the pads in that portion of the training camp and so we'll have a good long window uh, to compete with a number of guys and, and get to the bottom of it. Can I go back real quick to, to clarify, um, were you guys aware at all of the allegations or the alleged incident before you signed? Uh, first um, was May 27th. Uh, Dan, with, with Jaden continuing to grow, continuing to learn over these last couple of weeks, any specific examples that you've seen that's really stood out to you would be like, you know what, yeah, he's starting to get it, he's starting to grasp, he's starting to go to another level. Yeah, I think um, – the situation work we've been working really hard on. And so some of the timing and mechanics are different from college in a two minute setting than it is in the NFL. And so to see every day him going through those mechanics at a two minute. So the other day of, um, you know, at the end of the half, working down, working down in a clock situation where it's still moving on a first down. And so like that type of urgency. And so seeing him being comfortable in that environment, I would say that's uh, one example of many uh, that shows the work that he's putting in over the course of this next week and a half, pretty important because after this, after next week, they go on their summer break. What are some of the key elements, key important things you're trying to drill home to your team before this final stretch yeah, run we're here? We're trying to uh, work the situation side of the game as, as much as we can. And uh, knowing that, you know, about 70% of our, our league, the games are eight points or less. And so it kind of speaks to the importance of what can happen at the end of the half or the end of the game. And so much of that can tie in, you know, to special teams and how you're working that part of things. So, all three phases working together. And so we're really trying to dig in on those. Um, we're getting a lot of reps inside and some jog throughs, you know, on the system offensively and defensively, but being outside and the timing elements of situations, those are harder to walk through, you know, cause these seven seconds have to be done and executed at a really high pace. So we've been really pleased with the work that the guys have been putting into that spot. Dan, it looks like you and Adam really value positional size across the board, but outside your corners traditionally have been bigger guys. So with a guy like Emmanuel, who's got obviously a very unique skill set, but is on the smaller side, how do you work with him and work around whatever physical limitations he have, or, or do you even see him as having physical limitations you know, with his build? The first part um, is really, you know, the ball skills. And uh, at that spot to be able to turn the ball over as a defense, that's something that you really want. And that's I would say his superpower, you know, and the thing that he was so strong at. And so from there, you look for length. And so it doesn't always necessarily mean the size to it. And he's bigger than he was for sure. He's worked hard on that this off season to see that weight going up. But the the length and the ball skills at that position um, outside on on that freeway, you know, there's some real athletes and uh, you're just seeing more of this happen. You know, you see that some of the big numbers at contracts at receiver and corners. And so that position alone, man, it really calls for athleticism, the ball skills, and uh, having that length to be able to defend some of the bigger players. And then generally, how do you work with Chad and his staff to kind of get guys where you want them, both from a, a build standpoint, but then a physical trait standpoint? Yeah, so that's the good part of assessing um, every player. You know, not one size fits all. 
you know, from their body composition to where they're at. And so each player will have a specific weight and a goal that they're trying to work towards. And so it's not one size fits all. In other words, they have to be between 180 or 190. It's really customized to the player. And that way we'll find what's best for them. You said seven, eight, and nine. Anything surprised you in this process with these guys who are dealing with an entirely new coaching staff? Yeah, I think, I don't know if I would say surprised is the right word, but uh, man, I felt like the intent of improving. And really, that's what this time of year is for, not just for a ball player, but for coaches too, to say all of us, you know, collectively are getting better as we're going. I expect to see that more this week and then next week into our mini camp. But that's really what this week is setting us up for is to get into next week. It'll be more of a traditional in-season type of schedule on a Tuesday, a Wednesday and a Thursday, which, you know, in a normal NFL week for a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'll model some of that and some of the things that we would work on during those spaces. So that's what we're looking to, you know, to gain out of it. But uh, more than anything, man, I felt like an incredible work ethic to get better. And historically as a coach, guys who are playing for that next contract. You got a guy like Jamin Davis who's got to to, 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 to do that. Yep. Have you noticed a change historically with players that are doing that? And and what do you need to see from him in order for him to get to that next Yeah, level? I think that's a natural question, um, you know, at the end of a contract or you're in a contract year and what does that look like? Um, but more important even than that is like this improvement and we're trying to really push him specifically on the versatility. So you'll see him working some with the defensive line. You'll see him working with Ryan Kerrigan on the side. We're adding, you know, parts to his game that maybe we didn't use. Um, and we're certainly trying to explore that. And so if that's something that he can add value for himself and for the team, then we'll dig in. And uh, that'll take a while as well. That's not something that's uh, in one practice or in one week to say, okay, it's there. Let's take the time and, and work through it. And uh, I've been very impressed by his work ethic. Hey, Coach. Obviously, you and Adam Peters and ownership – inherited the history of this franchise and the previous ownership you were a part of it but when a situation like this arises where that those kind of allegations does it impact your decision making you know i said it earlier you know there's nothing that we can comment on you know there's investigation that's ongoing so um what we always want to do like in all the spaces and all the you know the players uh, let's have open communication and uh that's what we're you know we're trying to dig into and find and uh like I said earlier, a lot of people want to be a part of the solution. Our team has an army of support, like most teams do. And so that communication, that, that's a critical piece of it. Coach, as you look forward to the mini camp next week, how advantageous is it as a staff to have so many people present for the voluntary portion? Well, it's a, it's been this way the, the whole session. And uh, it's been exciting because now you can try different people at different spots. Maybe some matchups that you want to see. Okay, some man coverage versus zone. How is that look going to go? The competition during this phase of, you know, spring football is certainly different than it is in training camp. Uh, it's speed, it's your execution, but not the physicality. So we don't want to go too far in the evaluation physically because so much of this evaluation is assignment, where we're at, the communication. If we get that part right, then we know when we get to camp, we'll really let it rip. But getting the part of the communication, the speed right, then we can add the, the last element to it. And then as a coaching staff with, you know, people coming, obviously some of you know each other from the past, but some of you don't. How do you feel the, the unison in the, in the staff is coming together as a group? And that's part's been fun. Um, that's one of the great parts about, you know, our game is like it's always evolving and changing. And so what has been good, it started probably, I, I recognized it during free agency where people had different backgrounds had even been around different players. And so that carried into the draft. And now we're able to share ideas on the things. And so planning for a mini camp or planning for a training camp. You know, it's very easy now to ask, you know, Aylin or Cliff, you know, let, let's compare what was good. What'd you like? What would we do differently? Um, so those are questions that's nice to have somebody right there to discuss with. And, uh, you know, so that, that part's been exceptional for us. Yes. Um, that's how we're at right now, unless somebody emerges in one of these, uh, specific tryouts that they've got real punt pass kick background as a child uh but right now um yeah that's how we're leaning towards it um the fun part about this nikki is like there's a lot of exploring going on and uh you'll see some things today that might be a little bit different than friday and uh that's kind of the fun part about a new challenge a new thing to go and so um at one time we didn't throw the forward pass so that worked out pretty good so so from a football goes. perspective though McManus was here to be the kicker. Now you sign Ahmed. Like, how is that going to impact the roster? Do you have to sign a place kicker also? Or 
how does it go forward? No, he's a he kicks and kickoffs the whole thing. Like he's you, a full fledged kicker. Okay, do you expect it to be a competition though, or is yeah, we're going to compete guy? at every spot? It's one of the cool parts about like Adam and his staff. Like we're going to dig forever, and not just a kicker, but like at every spot. And so like that's what our whole program is based on is the competition. And so that that being the central theme that goes through kicker, that goes through quarterback, that goes through center, that goes through linebacker to corner to everywhere. And so. Um, having Adam and his staff always digging and looking. Um, that's what it's about. But it's also um, moments like this that guys get their opportunity. And when they do, a lot of times, you know, people have been waiting for that shot, that moment. And, uh, you know, we take it from there. So we have fresh eyes on somebody when they come in and then we do the evaluation as opposed to looking way far down the line. I know I recognize that's part of your job to, to look down there, but I try to put that off and just have fresh eyes for the moment and the player and what we think he can do. We, did, we didn't have a chance to ask you last week about the report that they could be moving uh, this part of the schedule, the OTA schedule, up towards training camp and, and change all that. What do you kind of make of, of that, compressing it that way? I don't have a lot of details on that. Um, but what I can say, if it's uh, something that, you know, from a player standpoint, it's it's better. There's, you know, health-related reasons behind it. You know, we'll find a way. And uh, the teaching is the big piece. I would imagine there's probably some guidelines that you want for the new player who's learning a system. Um, much different than like a, an NBA team that may keep a group from a year, maybe one new player into the next. Uh, you're adding a lot of players every year. So as long as there were some teaching elements to get the system down, uh, I have full confidence this is not the old days where you get to training camp to get in shape. You know, these guys are really ready. And so um, whatever guidelines are there, uh, that's good. I know there's some, you know, push for an 18th game, which I think, there, you know, there's a lot of fun for that too. But um, until then, you know, we'll play it out like we got it. And uh, your safety tandem, uh, Quan Martin, Jeremy Chan, I'm not assuming that they're the starters, but uh, the guys who may be in that role, just what have you been your early impressions of them and how do you kind of see them merging together as a, as a duo there? Yeah, and we'll also play where there's you know three safeties on the field at times. Um, and that position has some some flow to it. You know, Quan's got experience at playing nickel and down and then by the line of scrimmage. Jeremy can, you know, come from the top down and play over tight end. So their unique things they have, that's what this part of year this part of the year is for is to find those unique things but uh i've been really impressed by the two of them uh their communication together but they're not the only ones you know you're seeing different guys and different combinations and we'll continue to do that dan i, I know you guys were on different sides of the ball in dallas but tyler biotish having a guy like him here so far what have you seen from him how has he kind of meshed with the offense the offensive line with the team yeah i think uh having badass here working with him for three years um I knew not only, you know, the ball player, but I knew, you know, the person under the helmet. I knew what was behind the rib cage for him, these toughness. I saw, you know, him with a, a bad ankle playing. Like I knew how tough this guy was and uh, what an important teammate he was. And so for him to be around guys like Zach Martin and Tyron Smith that had incredible standards, guys like Nick Allegretti and, and Tyler to, to join into here, um, it's fun to see new leaders emerge into different spots. And I think we're seeing that with Tyler. Real quick, Jaden throwing out the first pitch of the Nats game coming up this weekend. Have, have you ever thrown out a first pitch? Do you have any tips for him? We had a big discussion about that uh, just yesterday. So all eyes are on that first pitch. And uh, I asked if there was going to be some practice involved uh, going out there. Oh, no doubt about it. So, yeah, we're expecting him to rip a strike uh, on that one. Awesome. Thank you. This one here, what field? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, uh, the good news um, – Turf field have been here a long time that we didn't utilize. And so um, let's give some props to Josh and to his team of recognizing when things have to change, um, you know, for the betterment of these players, that he's going to find a way to do that. And that's his pack to the guys and knowing that, like, there's a way to dig in to let them know that he's going to, you know, turn over every rock, so to speak, to make this experience as strong as it could be. Uh, man, are we appreciative of that. So it'll be another grass field that we'll have here. And uh, hopefully that'll be by the end of training camp. Around that, that's a timeline for that uh, as we're going forward. But um, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool thing to see that uh, when there's a chance to, to do it a little better. And obviously you see a lot of construction going on here uh, and taking that shot to do it. You know, we've got a lot of appreciation for Josh and his team of, of what they're trying to accomplish here. All right, All right you guys so have a good one. It. See ya. All right, that's Dan Quinn talking to the media about a lot of different things. And what I love about him a lot is, you know, we, we've we gotten to a point in society where we make it a one-size-fits-all type of person. When we were talking about Jaden Daniels being drafted, oh, he's too small. Uh, and then Lamar comes back at 205. 
Uh, we look at, uh, you know, little man. Okay. <laughs> I call him little man right here. Uh, at cornerback, at Emmanuel Forbes. And everyone looks at his size, but he has tremendous ball skills. And he don't have to be a certain size, but you have to be able to work at what he does well. And as Dan said, we're going to fit everything to each individual person. And I think that's the thing about uh, working out. You can see right with Peloton right now, there are people that are working out that may be in their 60s, maybe a female. But doing the same thing, but at a different thing, it's a, a male doing it that might be in their 30s. You know, so on the football field, why do we not expect the exact same thing to happen? And so I love that about him. But when I'm listening to him, I'm listening to stuff I did not hear for the last four years. You know, they will tell me about their schemes. And I could care less about your damn scheme. If you can't get the player to play full speed what he does well in your scheme, then your scheme is worth is a waste of damn time. So right now, they are now trying to get these guys ready to go. We we talk about um Jamin. And everybody basically assumes he's out. But no, this, they're working this dude in the D-line and linebackers because he has that potential. But we drafted him and say, oh, he's very versatile. He's a great cover guy. We drafted him because they say he was the guy that covered Kyle Pitts. And then all of a sudden we drafted him and we want to make him a middle linebacker. <laughs> we didn't let you didn't utilize the strengths that he had. So I just feel comfortable. Every time I hear Dan talk, I understand everybody. I wanted Ben Johnson. But the whole thing about it is this guy has a, a, a history of teaching people, getting the best out of them, multiple things. He's also a motivator. And this coaching staff is here because of him. Not just about anybody else, because of him. So he has influence on people. So I'm expecting this team to get a little better. And uh, and and we're gonna we don't know how good that's gonna be. I know there are people that are expecting the best of the best, but no, nah, you have to learn in this game and at this level. You don't just step in and it starts happening for you. You have to figure it out. So I'm going to expect some better things going on. I'm gonna take us a break here when JP comes back. We'll break down a lot more things that he was talking about. But ultimately, the field turf gone. That's old. People don't use it anymore. They would have left it there, but no. You, know, you have a new owner in Josh Harris and his crew. They look at stuff, say, no, no, let's move it out because they may be able to utilize that field for something else. You know, they may be able to put some pits and different things that where people can do some training. As I stated earlier, do everything you can to give your players the best chance of being the best that they can be. If you do that, great things are going to happen. 